So um, UEL is a very large university. We have an origin of sort of 20 plus thousand students studying with us predominantly on a full-time basis at um, undergrad and postgraduate but also preparation for pre-degree level as well. We are specialists in the main, we're arts, design, communication, we do have some elements of business like fashion business and we do have elements of computing like creative computing um, but in the main we are a specialist art, design, communication, performing arts included um, university and obviously based in London we're one of the biggest world we're certainly one of the biggest in Europe as a specialist university so that UAL and in terms of our central department so we cover marketing recruitment and admissions so it's quite a, a large central department so there's a complexity in that as you can imagine as a business model um, in terms of our, our structure and that affects quite a lot of our systems and processes as you can imagine because we've got to negotiate and navigate across all of all of that um, and so some of the issues that are unique to us really in the energy sector is that i think particularly the devolved nature of it and so for example in our colleges there are marketing and recruitment teams who have devolved budgets and have sizable teams as well who are uh, undertaking marketing and recruitment activities specifically for their college and, and a lot of the job that we do is trying to bring that together to work across UAL. So we suffer from things like consistency. So, so certain colleges will do things in different ways. Um, and that's sort of reflective of the nature of the colleges. So some are highly selecting and some are a bit more recruiting, for example. Some have better brand reputation and propositions than others. And certain subjects are more popular than others. So for all of those reasons, the colleges kind of have their own identities and tend to do things in their own way. So yeah. um, obviously my role is Deputy Director. I manage the heads of uh, student recruitment marketing, prospective student engagement and UK and international recruitment. So we kind of cover all recruitment and marketing aspects of the prospective student journey across those teams. I'm head of admission, so I'm sort of responsible for the admissions side. It used to be an academic registry and now with student marketing, recruitment admissions. And just one thing to add, we, we uh, the, the applications that we have are growing in volume over the last few years. We've had over 60,000 applications this year. So, you know, that's a challenge for us yeah. and we have to look at how we process so we, obviously why we uh, asked yourselves to help us. Two things, I think. Firstly, because we've recently converged. So it was SMR and it's now SMRA. So admissions has joined student marketing recruitment from registry. So I think the point of merger was October. And when we're formally now doing a little bit of restructuring and thinking about our staffing moving forwards in terms of how we're structured in the teams largely because we had heavy workloads particularly in the admissions area so that's one reason we're seeking a partnership but also to address that increased volume that we're getting on admissions i think there's one other point that's coming up really for UAL is that we're looking to develop an online product area, a fairly large online product area, and we're looking for growth in our residential area as well. That's part of our new strategy. So we know we can't stand still. So a lot of our thinking to seek out a partnership with you was to say, where are our really sort of difficult pain points right now? Um, and what can we do in terms of looking at the business processes and then hoping that would recommend not just people and, and obviously staffing and structures, but also system development? Particularly one of our pain points was around our postgraduate application. So that's where we see the biggest volume, particularly from international markets. And the way that we were working is that when applications were coming in, we were doing the checks sort of initial stage checking that they've got immigration history and that they've got enough years left to study because a lot of our courses will make alternate offers or make alternate offers to um, grad graduate diploma courses and we need to put on notes to make sure that they've got enough time to study and uh, checking qualifications to make sure that they've got the equivalent of a 2-1 because the academics don't really want to consider them but they actually do. So we're doing all this checking and it was, I mean, the volume, because as well, this year we introduced a two round system for our postgraduate 
which we hadn't had before. So having a deadline for round one, you know, most applicants will apply by the deadline. So we sort of we saw this increase in volume. We didn't know at the time whether it was the increase that we were going to see, you know, throughout the whole application cycle or, or that deadline had sort of caused that volume. But what we had was just this huge bottleneck. We were trying to check and we just couldn't get through passing through those applications to the academics. So we changed what we did slightly, but it we it was a knee jerk reaction and we really needed some external help, um, of external voice and, and really enable us to drill down into the nitty gritty of what we were doing to then sort of, you know, reflect and think about a different approach because the morale in the team was so low because they just could not see the wood through the tree for the trees yeah. with this huge huge volume so that that was really the catalyst of us asking for your help as well and the inquiries that it, yeah. are driven by all the the applications and inquiries coming into different uh, inboxes because we haven't got a, a CRM system to really enable us to manage inquiries effectively and different teams dealing with the, the inquiries not being responded to and then not a great applicant experience. We had a, a change of system back in 2017 admissions system so we went from a an older QL uh, system to SITS. And when we implemented SITS, I think we were implementing within a different contextual framework in terms of volume and scale of what we were dealing with with applications. But also we implemented some elements of it, for example, the application form for postgraduate without that sense of growth and volume and multiple applications. So it was it was more about sort of, let's make it as easy as possible for students to apply to UAL. Let's not put any barriers in place for the application form and, and design of that form and process, but which has actually led us to this problem now, which is we've got so much manual checking to do, both on an individual form plus, plus multiple applications that we haven't got any automation, we, you know, we haven't got any system support to help with that heavy workload. So I think we were really, we've almost got to sort of crunch point with with the postgraduate application process and then further growth keeps on coming so we just can't we got to a point where we couldn't deal with it you know and we're having to do something just to add as well that i think the reason for going external with this with this was also to get that ob objectivity of an outside pair of eyes coming and having a look at what we had in place because i think there's a bit of a kind of legacy culture um, where people have had kind of ownerships of particular parts of it, like the international side of it, for example, and um, <laughs> tend to just like keep working in existing ways. And um, what we felt was that it was going to be very difficult to shift the thinking on that unless we had someone else kind of come in and really delve yeah. into what was going on. It was kind of hard internally with that existing group of people to kind of disrupt and challenge and ask those hard questions um, because it's kind of so owned by and and what the contest kind of uncovered was this kind of single point of failure and um, that culture was making it quite difficult for us to implement change and to really kind of identify what's going on <laughs> but the thing was it was very there were lots of manual processes that were very labor intensive and that might be over kind of engineering things against a, a worry about risk compliance that was in fact what was uncovered by some of the work that was done in the end so but we needed that objective outsider input to be able to kind of evidence that and get to the bottom of it they were brilliant in particular the way they managed that you know, difficult context with staffing you know and and also staffing with very very heavy workloads um they dealt with that really well we, we pushed hard to get the timing you know and, and put time towards this because we knew we couldn't stand still so i think they dealt with that brilliantly i thought their knowledge and experience that they brought to bear on this was second to none because that could have gone very differently if they hadn't had that empathy and that real understanding of what some of these core issues were behind our problems. So I, for me, that was a, a really big win. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. They were fantastic. <laughs> they really were. Their manner and the way that they engaged with people was brilliant. And they were a great double act as well, you know, and they just really worked well with each other. And they just asked the right questions. They really did. They probed 
you know they just got it they understood it instantly you know it was an absolute testament to their experience of working in HE and and and, and everything that they brought to the table but they you know they made it fun as well I think people everybody enjoyed it they weren't patronizing in any way because I've been in some per process yeah. fix workshop before yeah. and the the um um facilitators have been quite patronizing and it was yes often patronizing they don't know the business that well and so they don't get the buy-in so i think on both counts mm. both melody and janine they knew the knowledge the knowledge was so in depth that, that it wasn't challengeable and their empathy and ability to facilitate um, that combination was absolutely dynamite. And for us, we chose Equantis because of the HE experience. And that was a key point of our procurement, wasn't it, Kath, that we wanted Equantis to do this work because we felt they had the knowledge and that really helped, I think. I totally agree. And the warmth and humour that they did it with was so, it worked so well. And to make, given that these sessions were all online and some of them were day long workshops, I remember when we were putting them in, we were just at A, God, you know, how can we ask people to give up a day of their time at this peak time? And so we're worried yeah. about yeah. Like, yeah. Just background yeah. in their work, you know, and, and B, to make it engaging and fun online is so difficult. But they really did. It's like actually people mm. are kind of looking forward to, to doing it, which is just amazing, really. Um, so they both were brilliant. Worn out by the amount of buy in they got from the staff as well. So in the chat and in the conversations yeah. that were going on, the staff really engaged. At one point, there was a quite a difficult conversation that I happened to be in. I don't know if you're in that one, Gemma, where I think you came in at the end where people started talking about the kind of college and the centre and how the college felt in the process was quite, um, must be quite challenging for the central teams to hear because they were sort of saying, you know, we're, we're treated as we're being a bit of a nuisance when we contact central teams for help. You know, we feel we're not involved in the process we're not trusted to do certain bits of the process and it was really it could have been really difficult but the way they managed that and made it sort of diffu- listened brought people in probed gently but um, prompted gently but kind of and captured it was just incredible because it could have been an absolute you know car crash of a kind of hour of the <laughs> workshop but they managed it we have made some progress in terms of well we had a meeting yesterday which was really useful um with our systems teams and we are currently budget setting and planning for the next year and beyond so what we've identified are some big projects of system development uh, it's not just system development it's also probably process as well but We've made that progress in a week, but I think we've had a good session already with systems and we're going to refine a list of sort of shorter BAU quick wins. And then we've also identified two much larger projects that we're putting in for a strategic investment bid with our digital and technology department. We've made that progress so far. And I think for me, what it's helped me do is it's helped me to clarify that our thinking on our restructure is the correct thinking so it's it's given me a bit of confidence to go forward with our restructure which is about to happen in another couple of weeks time but the work that Qantas have done and and the the information that they've been able to to give us in, in the detailed information on how some of those process business processes are working has definitely reaffirmed our thinking and certainly mine that we're doing the right thing the only thing maybe worth mentioning it is quite good um team belt building exercises yeah. felt like everyone was buying in and working together as a service to try and improve the overall working of the service and there were a few yeah. comments at the end when people when they did the last session it was just like thank you so much for this you know participants saying it's been great working together with you on this yeah no you're absolutely right it definitely I mean it's um you know we are one team really but because we've got people in a central team and people in the college teams and doing different parts of the process it's created silos so it was a great team building exercise this really helped others to understand what the other you know team were doing and um talking about in this open forum really really helped yeah great team building so yeah I do think I will be keen to work with the Qantas again, given the quality of this exercise and their ability, I think, to understand the sector.